Hey everybody, Dan again, back. DM Exotics is putting out some weird stuff this season. One of the most diverse breeding seasons that I've had to date. Uh, had a couple Boiga Synodon hatch, dog tooth cat snakes. A very, very big Boiga, possibly the biggest Boiga in the genus. These babies I wanna show you guys, they are something else. Very, very big babies and a little bit rambunctious as well. Now these, these have not shed. The eggs took 120 days to hatch is a long time in the incubator. Post first shed, uh, after they get that first shed skin off, they're gonna be really beautiful. They're kind of like a tri-color banded. And these are really big size babies. So I'm pretty stoked. These are pretty neat, but they're, uh, they're spunky little guys, full of energy. They get a little bit riled up. They will strike, which I like, because that means that they're probably going to do pretty well for feeding. But anyway, baby Boiga Synodon. I'm going to do this video a little bit backwards, starting with the babies, and then I'm going to show you what these little guys will turn into. They grow into some really big snakes. All right, let's get to that. So this, what I'm holding here in my hands, this is an adult Boiga Synodon. Now these guys, as adults, their body shape and structure, they are extremely light bodied and they are very, very long and very slender. Now a lot of people that you know, if their exposure to reptiles and, and the diversity that's out there is a little bit limited, they don't realize that snakes come in different shapes and sizes. They don't all look like chunky little ball pythons. They don't all look like reticulated pythons. These snakes are adapted to be up in the trees. They are extremely lightweight. They feed on birds in the wild uh, primarily, but they will eat lots of different stuff. But that light weight and that body structure allows them to get out on the very smallest of branches. They can stick their head into any of the nests. A lot of the weaver birds and that, they will go ahead and, and hang their nests at the tips of branches. So these guys can make their ways way out onto the tips of those branches, stick their head in. They will eat eggs, they will eat baby birds, they will eat adult birds. But this is one of my adults. This snake is probably nine, nine feet long or so. And that's kind of typical for a big male. Most of my females don't reach this size. They come in a bunch of different uh, color tones. They all kind of maintain the same sort of pattern and whatnot. Some of them are darker, some of them are lighter, some are a little bit more orange, a little more red, a little more yellow. I'll show you a couple more though, just to show you a little bit of the diversity. And as far as uh, demeanor, they're pretty shy. They, um, this is basically how they act. Very, very rarely will I come across one that tries to take a, take a strike at you, but pretty interesting snakes. Very, very different. I've brought a few to reptile expos, you know, they come by the table and they look and I hear it right away the comments, oh, that snake is sick. And it's like, no, you just walked down an entire aisle full of ball pythons. It's not a ball python. This is normal, this is what it's supposed to look like. But anyway, let me show you a few more in some different colors. So here's another one. This one is a little bit darker, a little bit more orange, has a lot more yellow coming out in the body. Really, really pretty snake. You can see that the, the head and the labials is more, more yellow and gold. I keep these snakes in arboreal type cages try to keep them with some height, let them have some branches, and I feed them uh, whole quail eggs, and I feed them frozen thawed chicks and frozen thawed quail. And they will eat scented rodents occasionally. Uh, sometimes I'll scent the rodents with like raw egg, and that tends to work really well. Or you can scent them with chicks as well. And normally, you know, once they've been around for a while and they're feeding real good, they usually feed readily on the eggs and the, and the birds, and then you can kind of start switching them over. But really interesting snakes, you know, you get, you get good ones to start with, 
you get them established and they breed just like all the other boiga it's not uh, it's not extremely difficult All right, you guys, so this is the third animal, just to show a little bit of diversity. It's a little bit drab uh, in coloration compared to the others. But that's about it, Boiga Synodon. You know, we're doing some crazy stuff over here. It's been, like I said, a pretty exciting season. So that is it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you, uh, if you're local and you're going to go to the Reptile Super Show in Pomona, it's next weekend. And uh, we will be there with a table full of all of our normal, or I should say abnormal, uh, oddities. So... Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again very soon. Take care, you guys.